So, hi, uh, my name is Johan Falk, I live in Sweden, and this is a quick uh, introduction to something called Paperize. Uh, it's a tool, online tool, to create game components. Uh, I use it for cards, you can use it for other things as well. It's an open source thing built on top of, uh, well, using Google Drive or Google Spreadsheets as backend. It might uh, start using other backends in the future, who knows. You can access uh, a functional editor at beta.editor.paperize.io and uh, you will then have to uh, authorize this application to access your Google account, a Google Drive account, and it will only be able to access stuff created through this uh, Paperize application. All right, so as you can see here, this is a landing page. Um, you can have uh, multiple games, and I'm gonna start a new game to show you how you can do some of the stuff in paper, uh, the basics and a bit more. So I'm going to start a new game. This is my new game. Start designing. You can see there's something happening here, creating folder, creating images, subfolder, creating spreadsheet. And if I go to my Google Drive, I can actually, now I'm uh, thrown into this uh, game editor page. I can open the Google Drive folder for my new game. So in my Google Drive, I have, uh, it creates first a paperize uh, folder, which you can move around as you want. And then a subfolder for your new game, subfolder for images and a spreadsheet for my new game, which is just an empty spreadsheet for now. We'll have a look at this soon. Um, when, uh, well, creating stuff, uh, you start by adding new components. You give it a name, my cards, my new cards even. You can copy existing stuff if you want to make clones of existing components. I don't want to do that right now. Here, you get two uh, different editor buttons. You have edit here, which uh, basically changes the name or the size of the component. And then here, the uh, template edit button which is the one you want to use. The template is the thing uh, determining how content taken from a spreadsheet will be displayed on this component. And it's displayed in layers. So let's have a look now at my uh, spreadsheet. I can actually, let's show you. I can use this button to e edit, uh, open the spreadsheet for this game. And when I created my component, my new cards, there was a new tab created here saying my new cards. And I'm gonna copy some data from another spreadsheet. Just some example data, copy, paste. Let's also separate first row here. So first row here contains some uh, information, the name of the data, and then you have the data. So each row is in this case, a card. You have an elf cost one, some description here, which is pretty long, as you can see, some name for an image uh, and a color I added, just something. You can add whatever you want here. You don't have to use everything you put in the spreadsheet in the actual component either. Okay, so now I'm going into the template and I'm gonna add a new layer. And I'm, I'm gonna add a text layer because I'm gonna put the title on top of the uh, card I'm creating, text. And it's called text by default. I'm going to call it title like this. And if I reload now, I think, yeah, it'll try to access any column called title and just output that content by default. You can change the uh, content here. By default, it uses triple braces, title and triple braces or curly braces. Um, you could change this to something if I write instead, say, image. I should probably have it, yeah, capital I. Yeah, capital I. Like this. It puts the content of this table here. So there's nothing magic going on with the different names of the uh, columns here can have magic names as well, but that's a, a different story. Let's have, and, and you can also add just custom text is an image here. So this will be replaced by a column content, and thus this is just plain text. 
But let's remove that and just use the title as it is. Dimensions uh, tells you where to put this. If you check this box, which is kind of useful, you can see how this component is placed, or this layer is placed on the component. I usually start with using this inset method of setting uh, uh, dimensions, and I switch to millimeters because I don't live in the US. And then perhaps three millimeters from top, left, and right. And from the bottom, I don't really know, so then I switch back to X, Y, and then width and height, and I set the height to, say, 10 millimeters or something. Then you have some funny things going on with the rounding numbers. That's okay. Okay, so here's my title layer now placed on the card. I can, as you expect, change the font. Uh, the fonts starting with small letters, um, lowercase letters, uh, have some problems with special characters, which might be an issue if you live in Sweden, probably not if you live somewhere else. Otherwise, just pick something. That wasn't really readable. Let's pick something else. Azar. That must be good. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and let's make this centered in, the, in this frame. Awesome. This is my title. Uh, what else? I want to have the description. So let's add a new text layer, which is then by default placed here. We'll have to change that. But let's first call it this description. It will then by default pick up the description text. All right. Uh, let's change the dimensions inset in millimeters to say 15 from the top should be good, right? Yeah. Three from the left, three from the right, and who knows, three from the bottom. That's perfect. Okay. That's probably not perfect. Come to think of it, let's put this 30 millimeters from the top or even more. Now, if I increase this to say 45, you'll see, oops, 45, you'll see that this text is scaled down. It automatically, uh, paperize automatically uh, uh, decreases the font size to fit the text in the box you have and within reasonable limits. I don't think it goes beneath like size three or something. You can check that out yourself if you want to. Okay, so we have a title, we have text. Let's include an image. But to do that, we need to upload images. And it's not enough to just go to Google Drive and drop your files here because then the uh, files are not added through Paperize. And Paperize can only access things that you upload through Paperize. So instead, I recommend, recommend using this button here. Add stuff, change folder to say, images. You can create new folders as you want, um, uh, and you can place the images anywhere. Just use something that makes sense to you and allows you to keep an order in, in the stuff you have. Let's choose files. Now I probably need to connect over VPN to make my file system appear. Sorry about that. Come on. Ah, here we go. Sorry. So let's go to example images. And here I have just some sample images, image one to image seven dot jpg for most of them, but here's one PNG. So open, uh, select this and upload. And now if I have a look at my Google Drive, you can see that these are being added here. Okay, nice. So now going back to my template, I'm gonna add a, an image layer. And it will be called image, that's quite all right, yeah. And uh, dimensions, let put, let's put this, uh, 15 millimeters from the top, I guess. Uh, three, three, and how high should this be? Maybe 20, will that work? 
Let's have a bit more. 35 might work. That's too much. So let's go for 30. It doesn't really matter right now. Sorry for taking time on this. Okay, so image selection here. You can have one static image. If you want to have, say, a backside image or something for your cards, you can just select one image and that's it. But usually I think you would like to have something dynamic. And then this works in a slightly different way than uh, when you create dynamic text for text uh, layers. Here you select one of the columns. I'm going to use image here. And we have image three, four, one, and five. And then I add a suffix dot jpg like this. If I had some prefix here like icon or something, I could put it here as well. All right. Uh, so here we have a preview of first card, second card, and so on. Kind of nice. Um, for images as well, uh, let's see here, uh, image alignment. You can then uh, select whether to fill the entire box to scale down to have it fit fully within the box and leave some empty space outside it usually, or stretch to have wonky proportions, but no white space showing. I'm gonna go for fill, why not? And you can also have the alignment. Um, what else? Maybe I should show you also this shape thing. You can have here rectangles, rounded rectangles, and ellipses. Um, useful for some cases, uh, not useful uh, in other cases. But let's have a rectangle here. Let's have a stroke that is really thin. Like this. Let's not highlight this layer so we can actually see this thin border. And then we can put it, uh, say, 0.5 millimeters from the from each side. This will give us something nice to uh, uh, use when cutting out these cards if we, if we print them, which is something I'm going to show you soon. Okay, so here's uh, adding shapes. You, we could instead have a uh, an ellipse. Probably not very useful, but you could have other kind of shapes here. Um, yeah, all right. So I'm going to show you a few other things soon, but let's start with this. Uh, so here we have now four cards, uh, and I can add more if I want to. I can now print my game. I think I have this set up to print an A4 size, which is a common one in Europe. Uh, and let's have here, I'm going to put in example images. Now paperize add this adds this to a page and uh, crams in as many uh, cards you, uh, that fits on each page. So if I, for example, now have just more of these, there's a way to, to uh, use duplicate cards. If I want to have nine elf cards, I can have some column here amount set that to nine. Let's have a look at that actually. Uh, so this one, I wonder where I add this. Some ah, never mind. Let's not do that right, not right now. Okay. Ah, so let's now reload the content of this uh, spreadsheet. Okay, here we have quantity expansion. Let's use amount as quantity expansion. And do a new, uh, let's reload just to be sure. And print game. You can see now it prepares cards and gives us a PDF. Let's replace the old one. And we should have nine elves and then other cards coming as we added them in the spreadsheet. Isn't that nice? Okay, so that's the basics of using Paperize. Let's have a look at some other things, some of the fine print things. Print settings. 
Uh, I use A4, as I said, you can have a custom size. You can, if you have components that are bigger than the paper you're using, it will be split into multiple pages, which is kind of useful if you want to be print, say, a, a game board or something. Um, change orientation and whatever. You can set also the uh, margins for the page, which is useful sometime. And in the template here, we have uh, font color, yeah. Look at this. This is, uh, if you find a property with this symbol on it, uh, it uh, it's a way to set this property dynamically from your from your spreadsheet. It says that you can use a magic property called title colon text color. And now if I go here, change this column name to title title colon text color. Note the capital C here. It will then the game will then oh sorry the game will then pick up this. Uh, a new column name and use that to set the text color. Let's see if we can do that just by reloading here. I'm not sure that works, but it does. Okay, nice. So if I open font here again, you can see this is now green. It has found this magic property in the uh, spreadsheet. So the elf is green, but the fishmonger is black. So fishmonger has no property set, and then it falls back to this uh, default here. And you can use, uh, I'm pretty sure, these uh, either, well, anything that works with CSS formatting. So uh, some names of colors, but also these hex names, hex codes for colors. Uh, what else? Well, there are a lot of things you can use for this magic uh, property. You have your text size, for example, can be used to set text size on, on things. For images, you can have image alignment, this uh, stretching scaling thing, or the positioning of the image as well. Um, let's have a look at something I did with icons that could be pretty useful. So let's have, we have here cost for these different cards. And it so happens that I have icons I want to upload to show the cost of these cards. So let's add these two images as well. I could have a subfolder for icons, but I don't have that right now. So icons, you can see here costs zero to nine and they are named cost dash or hyphen zero dot PNG. Let's upload these. Start uploading. All right, open the template again. Add a new layer, an image, which should be, uh, I don't know, cost, I guess. Image selection, dynamic. Prefix cost hyphen. Add the cost column and then dot PNG. I could have made this into some kind of formula in the spreadsheet like this. Uh, call, uh, Cost ampersand this one ampersand uh, and then PNG like this and then ha have this for cost cost icon or something but you can also do this inside paper as you can see it works but the size is isn't really optimal so let's change that as well let's have it. Uh, five percent. Why do I want to have this in percent? No real reason. All right, five millimeters times five millimeters, and let's. Well, that's probably fine. Let's have it like this. It doesn't re look really good, but it it's a fine. It uh, works for this example. And I noticed, by the way, uh, PNG images if they are really big. Uh, they aren't scaled down in a good way. So keep a decent size of the PNG images. Otherwise, they won't look very good on, on the output. All right. Um, I think we're approaching the end of this video. Um, 
what else is there to say? You can delete games um, either, either from this button here, and some things you can see, or from here, my new game you can delete as well. Um, print settings, component stuff. My new game, what happens here? Ah, oh, okay, cool. Um, I think that's it. There's a nice Discord community you can uh, find uh, searching for Paper Eyes online. If you go to paperice.io, you find a lot of good uh, things here. Also a way to support Paper Eyes uh, from Patreon, uh, which is a good thing. And here's this guy. He, he helps you out if no one else does. So um, check out Paperize. I've had a lot of fun with it. Well, I could tell you a few of a few limitations, I guess, of Paperize. Um, there is no way currently to change formatting of text uh, mid uh, inside each um, field here. So if I wanted to have this word uh, in bold, for example, let's expand here. Ah, no. Ah, sorry. Let's wrap the text. So there's no way of having certain words in bold font or italics or something or changing the font in mid paragraph uh, yet. It's an issue being worked on at, at the paperize issue queue, which is great. That's what's so great with uh, open source stuff. Uh, you can uh, join in helping and improving Okay, so I hope this will help you get started using Paperize. If you have any questions, uh, go to the Discord server and we'll uh, talk there. And I hope you all have a lot of fun. Thank you and goodbye.